All right, so today I'd like to talk about an idea that Zafrank used to talk about on his channel many years ago. Zafrank had a great channel, great blog, great, a really just helpful video series on just very, very different, a lot of different concepts on how to live your life. And he was swallowed up, unfortunately, by, by BuzzFeed. So rest in peace to all of his great content. Not, not that it doesn't exist anymore. It's just it's buried behind all the projects he's doing now. So he had a great channel. A lot of great material, and one of the things that he used to talk about is a concept called brain crack. Brain crack is this idea that you have in your head that you refuse to try and uh, put out into the world because you have to wait until it's perfect. You have to wait until you can <clears throat> implement it perfectly. You have to wait until you have the time, the money, the education, the resources, the help. And uh, the reality is that you're never going to have perfection with an idea that you want to implement. It's, it's never going to happen. You are going to suck when you first start at anything. And the thing is, you have to get out the suck before you can get, out, get, get to the part that's good. So let's say that you want to start competing. You want to be a competitive sprint runner. The first time you ever decide that you're going to run 30 meters, you're probably going to suck. You're probably going to be slow. You're going to be sore at the end of it and you're gonna feel like shit the next day. It's gonna be terrible. You're not gonna be anywhere near a competitive sprint runner. But then you decide to do it again, and you do it again, and then you figure out, hmm, if I eat this instead of eating that, I feel better. Hmm, if I run in the morning instead of running at night, I can get better times. And eventually, you will find out what works for you so that you don't suck. But you had to suck in the beginning in order to not suck later. And the same is true in many other aspects of life. You have to suck in the beginning. You have to be okay with it. You can't just keep saying, tomorrow, I, I know, I, 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 say, I really want to do that, but I don't have everything I need, but tomorrow I'll do it. The reason that we say tomorrow is because if we simply were honest with ourselves, if we said, I don't have the discipline or the determination to attempt to achieve my goal because I'm afraid and I'm never going to do it, we'd probably break down and cry. We realized that we were in dead-end jobs, working for douchebags that we don't like, doing something every day that we have no passion for, and we would probably break down and cry. However, saying that we're going to do it tomorrow, just thinking about that program that we're going to write, or that symphony we're going to compose, or that car dealership we're going to open, or that book that we're going to write and publish, just thinking about what we're going to do tomorrow allows us to feel so much better about the crap or the lack of anything productive that we're doing today. And that has to stop. Tomorrow is never coming. Because here's what you did today. What you did today is procrastinate and say, I'll do it tomorrow. You didn't say, I am going to learn how this function works, then tomorrow I'm going to try to implement it. You didn't say, I'm going to try to solder a micro BGA today, and then tomorrow I'm going to solder a large chip. In the pursuit of your goal, whether your goal is to become a good programmer, a good board repairer, a good artist, a good ballerina, whatever it is you want to do, and it would be a good chef, you have to say what you're going to do. Today, I'm going to learn. Today, I'm going to learn like how to prepare this recipe. Then tomorrow, I'm going to try cooking it for a group of people. See, that works. When you use tomorrow in that context, it works because you're building upon what you did today. But when you say, I will wait until tomorrow when I have the resources, you're not saying, today I am going to try to gain the resources, then tomorrow I will start my idea. You're not saying, okay, today I'm going to work on gaining capital, then tomorrow I'm going to work on building infrastructure. Today I'm going to work on building infrastructure, then tomorrow I'm going to work on finding good people. Today I'm going to work on finding good people, then tomorrow I'm going to work on finding the, you know, the uh, people who want to buy the product. See, that works because every day you're building on what you did yesterday, so using the word tomorrow works. But if you say, I don't have anything I need today, but tomorrow I'll do it, what the fuck? What's going to change? If today you did nothing, then what are you going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow you're simply going to do nothing. So if you have that mindset, then tomorrow is never coming and you're never going to get anywhere. So if you think that tomorrow I'm going to do this, I want you to realize and accept today that tomorrow is never coming. Stop telling yourself that so you can smile. Stop telling yourself that so that you can get high on your brain crack. And stop allowing yourself to feel good about a mirage, about a fantasy. Because it doesn't exist and tomorrow it's not going to exist either. This is something that I have encountered many times over the course of my life. I think I'm going to wait until I'm good at something. I'm going to wait until I have an engineering degree. I'm going to wait until I know everything about how something works before I get started.
And the reality is that that is not the way the world works. I remember being an intern at Avatar Studios. I did not know a lot. I was not a genius. I was not great with electronics. I had a little bit of experience. And I thought I was going to wait until I knew everything. I'm going to wait until I know everything before I start doing stuff. And one day, they had a symphony orchestra book a session. They needed headphones for everybody in the symphony orchestra, and most of them are broken. So, you think they're going to wait until I'm perfect? They said, hey, you're pretty good at mopping the bathroom and cleaning the toilets. You're pretty good at that. Would you like to move on from cleaning the toilets for free to, to troubleshooting and fixing the wiring on 30 to 90 pairs of headphones before tomorrow morning's session for free? And I said, absolutely, I am happy to do so. I didn't get to start when I knew what I was doing. I didn't even know how to open up all those Fostex headphones. I had no clue what I was doing, but, and I sucked. For the first 15 minutes I was doing it, I probably fucked up two or three pairs of headphones. And then they saw what I was doing was wrong, they corrected me, then I did it a little better. Then the next day, came, there was another problem. It had nothing to do with headphones. It had to do with switching a console. I don't know shit about switches on the SSLJ9000. I am clueless, but... I learned. So today I'm going to learn how to solder a switch. Then tomorrow I'm going to figure out how to troubleshoot whether it's the switch or something else. Then tomorrow I'm going to replace what's wrong. See, every single day I'm building on what I did the last day and I'm sucking a little bit less as a result of having a little bit of a plan, as a result of diving in. And at the end I was pretty damn good at my job. At the end of it, I could walk into the studios that didn't want to hire me originally and say, hey, would you like to get rid of all those uh, toothpicks and your switches and your console so that you can actually go back to charging a respectable rate for the room? And that felt great. That was a really cool thing up until, you know, I wasn't able to make money at it anymore because most of these studios that were kind of living on the edge were just bankrupt after the 2008 crash. However, I move on and I do something else. And the same thing happened with the laptop stuff. I sucked at motherboard repair. And I always said, I'm tired of outsourcing. Tomorrow, I'm going to learn it. You know what happened when tomorrow came? I said, tomorrow, I'm going to learn it. And you know what happened when tomorrow came? I shipped a bunch more motherboards out to this fucktar that I was outsourcing everything to. And you know what happened when tomorrow came? I shipped another bunch of motherboards out to this fucktard that have fixed a lot of them. And it, it, you know, I, I, never, I never did anything because I never tried to build on anything. I, never, I was afraid to suck. I was afraid to sit there and realize I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know the first thing about any of this. I am an ignorant, idiot, buffoon who has no place doing any of this work. Why am I even bothering? All I've ever worked on are these studio electronics from fucking 1951 and 1980 where they, were, you know, they didn't even have a such thing as switched mode power supplies back then. I mean, I was clueless. I had no idea what I was doing. It was, and, and it was just, and 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 I didn't, I didn't like sucking at it. I didn't like that feeling of of being totally unfamiliar. I didn't like that feeling of being in this space where I was, where, where I didn't know what I was doing. So I just put it off until tomorrow. Because I did nothing today, because there was nothing to build on. When the next day came, since I had done nothing the day before, my tomorrow excuse just became tomorrow again, and tomorrow again, and tomorrow again. And one day I decided I'm going to figure out why this has no backlight. Why does this have no backlight? And I figured out that it was the fuse. And this still sucks. Keep in mind, actually having to put effort in to figure out that the fuse is the reason you have no backlight, that's still bad. That's still pathetic. That's still pretty fucking stupid. At least, you know, by many, many people are going to say that's pretty fucking stupid. That's what a lot of people were telling me while I was trying to figure it out. And, but I celebrated it. What I did is I celebrated every single time that I sucked, but I knew that tomorrow I was going to suck less as a result of me figuring out how bad I suck today. So the next day came, and it's like, okay, now I know that it's a backlight fuse. How the fuck do I replace that thing? I have a $10 soldering iron. My tip is, is just a piece of fucking, you know, burned up carbon at this point. How am I going to replace this? And I tried to replace it, and I knock off half of the board, and I have no idea what I'm doing, and I'm depressed and sad, and oh, I sucked. I fucked up soldering today. Tomorrow, though, tomorrow, we're going to try a different method. Tomorrow, I'm going to try a different method. And the method I tried tomorrow worked. And I was so, so, so happy. And then I said, okay, so, you know, I'm going to go through this entire stash and fuck sending this stuff to somebody else. Let's go through this and find all the different ones that are the same problem. And the next day comes and it's, oh, crap. It's not the fuse. Fuck. Well, what could it be this time?
And I decided to look in the schematic, and I learned a little bit. I didn't say, I'm going to wait until, you know, I would like to fix motherboards, but I'm going to wait until I become an engineer, and then I'll fix motherboards, right? Because that doesn't work. What I decided to do is look at it and go, okay, what the fuck does this do? Okay, so this is a, this is a DC to DC boost circuit. Let's look that up on Wikipedia. Holy crap, Wikipedia's de uh, definition and explanation for anything remotely complex is impossible to understand unless you're a genius. Okay, let's look at the data sheet for the chip. I look at the data sheet for the chip and it's like, this does this, I don't get this. This does this, I don't get this. This works in these temperature constraints, I don't get this. This does, I don't get this. Okay, so pin two does this to create a boost. Okay, okay, so I know it's doing that, but why is it doing that? Why does it matter? Well, that's connected to this component. Okay, let's replace that component. Okay, that component has nothing to do with it. Okay, let's replace the component in front of it. Oh, whoops, that went on fire. Oh, that component in front of it is orientation. Okay, whoops, let, my bad. Let's put it on the way it's supposed to go. Okay, still doesn't work. Okay, so let's replace the thing that's doing the thing to those two components. But why does that matter? Why does that make a difference? How does that actually boost? Let me look at this on a meter and see. I mean, on oscilloscope, okay, so I see the wave, and I get that there's a bigger wave, but why does it work that way? Let's look up what these two components in between the switching thing do. Oh, okay, so now that's why that works the way it does. Aha, and so every step of the way I sucked. Every step of the way I didn't understand how a basic fucking component functioned. Every step of the way I didn't know how a basic circuit worked. And then I knew, and then I learned, and then aha. The aha moment, the thing that you're looking for, the moment in which you suck just a little bit less. Now, I may not be an engineer, but I know what's going on in that circuit, and I'm happy. And tomorrow, now I'm going to have the confidence to look at a circuit that has nothing to do with backlight. And every single day, I just build upon it. And every single day, I celebrate the small successes. See, it's not like you're supposed to just one day go from here to here. I want to accomplish becoming an en smart, intelligent engineer. No, it's... Fuck, I don't know what a backlight fuse is. Fuck, I don't know how to replace it. Fuck, I don't know how to do anything but replace a backlight fuse. Okay, now this worked. Now I know what the inductor and the diodes are together. Now I know why switching is important in my early 20s. Um, when, you know, up until my early 20s, I had never worked on anything that dealt with switching before because everything I worked on was, <laughs> was, what if I was from a fucking pre-switching era. It was just these little steps, every step of the way. And the problem is, here's the thing. Nobody likes to suck. Everybody likes to think you're just going to go ahead to the end. But you have to, you're going to suck every step of the way. And what I do is I celebrate every success. I celebrated making those shitty headphones work again. Then when I made the shitty headphones work again, I celebrated learning how to solder a switch. Then I celebrated knowing how to solder, a, that I had to replace a switch and how to diagnose a switch. Then I celebrated being able to figure out what's wrong with the 2254. Then I celebrated figuring out crosstalk and the Neve cons and the 8088. Then I celebrated figuring out what's wrong with the mic preamp and the 31102. Then I celebrated figuring out how to replace VRP switches in less than a half hour so that I could get rid of the toothpicks and all these consoles and all these studios across New York City. And then at the end of it, I realized, hey, hmm, so other people think this is impressive. So I thought I was celebrating these tiny little bullshit achievements, but I'm actually gotten somewhere. And I don't even remember what it was like when I started. That's pretty fucking cool. And you know what you call that? You call that success. And you get success by, not, by building every single day on what you did yesterday, tomorrow. Not based, you don't do that by saying tomorrow I'm going to do this, but I'm going to wait until the circumstances are all perfect. Because that's not the way life works. So right now I'm still not an engineer. I'm still not a design engineer. I'm still, fuck, if I, if I were to go on Craigslist or monster.com or Indeed right now, I still couldn't get a job above minimum wage. But I'm a lot further along than I would have been if I said I'm going to wait until I'm perfect. Let's say I decide to go for an engineering degree right now. What's more valuable? Going for an engineering degree and working uh, towards your degree with no knowledge or working on your engineering degree after you have a good working knowledge of digital circuits, analog circuits, and real-world based troubleshooting where you're combining a bunch of different circuits to make one specific thing work and you, under, and you can figure out and comprehend the sequence of how it all goes together. What's more valuable? See, since I wasn't afraid to suck, when I finally get to the point where it's like, I have the resources, I have the time, I have the money, I have the infrastructure, I have the people, when I get to that point where I have everything, now I can actually put it to good use because I have everything that I learned and everything that I accomplished for myself from the past. 
And, you know, it's something that I'm doing with this forum right now as well. I don't listen to my own advice very often. A year and a half ago, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to punch you in the face, girl. I didn't see you. Come here, little Barry. Come here. No, oh, don't be afraid, Barry. I'm sorry. Barry, I'm so sorry, girl. Come here. He accidentally hit her in the face. Nuzzle. Good little kitten. Nuzzle. Did. No hard feelings. Good girl. So I had this idea for a motherboard repair forum about a year and a half ago because I had all these people after I did this YouTube channel calling my business, emailing me, and not with these regular questions like, uh, not with stuff like, you know, will this screen work with this board and shit like that. It's, okay, so I have three volts on this rail and five volts on this rail and this one's supposed to be one volt but I'm getting 0 0.8 and the feedback is there and blah, blah, blah. It's like, shit, it's like, oh my God, man. What makes you think I have the time to answer this? But I would get these questions, and a lot of those questions were from other stores that should know better, because I know that they get calls all the time annoying the shit out of them with these questions that they can't get paid for, that waste their time, that take away from their ability to do actual repairs for their customers. But I digress. So I had this idea for a forum, because I figured a lot of these people may be willing to pay to have these things answered. And then I would have my time freed by being able to pay somebody to answer them so that I'm not always answering them for free. And I figured I would create the scalable model. You know what I did? I ignored Zafrank's advice. I ignored my own advice. And I said, I don't really know how to put together a forum. I don't know how to market it. I don't know how to install it. I don't know how I'm going to moderate it. I don't know what the terms of service are going to be. I don't know how to set up a subscription. I don't know what type of payments I'm going to take. I'll figure that out tomorrow. I'll learn about this tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. I'll implement it tomorrow. You know what happened? Almost two years passed and I didn't do shit. And then I finally decided one day, fuck it, I'm gonna follow my advice. Let's flip a coin, let's figure out what software to use. I asked somebody who I figured may not be interested in this, and I figured he may be interested once he sees money coming in. I said, would you be interested in this? And I don't get any answer from, uh, from, us, from Duke on Skype. I'm like, eh, I'll wait till tomorrow. And I put together the forum, I buy it, we buy the forum, and uh, I don't even know if this is a good one. It was literally like on a coin flip, like V Bulletin, PHPBB, this other software. I just randomly chose one that allowed for subscription-based payments. I try to install it. I don't know how to install it. It's buggy. Oh, my version of PHP on my server is not the version that I need. I finally get that fixed, and then there's another bug in installation contact them, they fix it, I don't know how to set up recurring subscriptions, eh. and people are actually joining and they're like, we can't see the form and we don't even have an option to pay, it's like, oh fuck, oh, there's this checkbox that I forget, whoops, my bad, and then I set it up, and then I realize that nobody can post, whoops, I forgot to enable permissions for this, my bad, and then people are kind of confused as to what type of support level they're going to get, I, I, I've made a couple of posts discussing what level of support we're going to get, what we expect of you, what you can expect of us. We're building it as we go. I'm still using a lot of the default templates. Honestly, I don't care. There's a default template there. It sucks. Somebody asked me, hey, if I cancel my subscription, um, uh, will I have to start over again or will my old post still be there? I literally responded, I don't know. I don't know. I suck. I suck as a forum administrator. I suck as a forum host. And you know what? I'm okay with it. Because if I wasn't okay with sucking, I wouldn't have a forum right now with 60 members. I didn't know how to market it. I didn't come up with a marketing plan. So you know what I did? I did a video at two in the morning, tired, my fucking laptop webcam. I uploaded it to YouTube. Hey dudes, we have a forum, 29 bucks a month. We want questions answered. You come over and yeah. And 60 members. Like, could it have been done better? Yes. But let's say I decide to wait until July to do it. If I wait until July to do it, it doesn't matter how good I do it in July. I'm gonna be 60 subscribers short of what I would have had in July because I didn't build it up from March, April, May, June. Even if the promotion I did sucked, it's still promotion.
Even if the software that I use sucked, it's still people using it. It's better than having nothing. So that by the time I actually do decide, I'm going to put some legitimate effort in to do this right. By the time I do that, would you rather would you rather implement the idea right after it has 60 users, after it has a following, after you have a payment system set up, after you figured out how to sync it to your accounting software, after you have a staff of people who are going to be willing to answer questions, or would you be willing to start on all of that from scratch when you find the time? What you realize is that if you don't have the time to do something right, it doesn't mean that you're going to be doing it wrong. It just means that you're gonna have to live with having the time to do it so-so. And let me tell you something, that when you're trying to build a new idea from scratch, having the time to do it so-so is a lot better than not having the time to do it at all. So cut this shit where you're going to wait until you have all the resources and all the time to do it perfectly before you do it, because perfect is never going to come, because in your world, tomorrow is never going to come. Perfect's never going to come. The time is never going to come. You need to make the time to do all that shit it now. So when let's say July comes and I have free time in July and I say I'm going to put time into really developing a form, into really marketing a form, into really making this much better. I'd much rather make better a forum that has 60 paying users that I know how to administrate, that I know how to operate, that I know which version of PHP works with it, than figure out all that shit from scratch. And you know what? If somebody happens to be pissed off that I'm using the default template, if somebody's pissed off that it still says like 13,000 users online in the bottom because it never times out a session, well, you know what? Boo fucking who. I'll figure out how to live with it and I won't care. It's better to, here's the thing. By the time you uh, get good at everything, all those things that were fuck-ups, they're not going to matter anymore. So, for example, in the beginning of my idea, nobody gives a fuck that in the beginning, that on, on the bottom of the forum, it says 13,000 people logged in right now because I fucked up when I set out the session timeout thing, right? No, nobody cares about that because it's a new idea. Someday, people are going to care about that. Someday, who knows, this forum may be so professional that people look at it, and it's actually judged on a level of, oh my God, look at this thing that they missed out on, that they didn't implement properly, how silly it is. By the time I get to that point, I'll have the resources available to figure out how to troubleshoot that. The idea will be making me enough money that I'll know how to fix that because I at least got started with it. So the whole idea is even if I screw up a little in the beginning of implementing my idea, I'm hoping that I will have snowballed and been so successful off of just putting the idea out there into the world at all that I'll, that, that those past fuck-ups are not even going to matter, that I'll be able to fix them, that it's going to be a... And nobody's going to care by then. Same thing with the border pair videos, you know. With the border pair videos that I was doing, the beginning ones sucked, right? But they got me a small following. And then the ones that I did after it where I was putting the camcorder on my shoulder, they sucked a little bit less, but they got me a small following. And that following made me realize it may be worthwhile to buy a better camera. Then I realized it may be worthwhile to get a microscope camera. Then I realized it may be worthwhile to do it every day. Then I realized, wait, my audio and video is out of sync. Let me get a better computer. Here's the thing. When I finally got the better computer, what would be better? What would be a better way to do the videos? Would it have been better if I had no following because I had never done those videos with the $100 camcorder on my shoulder? Or would it have been better if I had um, three or five or 10,000 subscribers off of doing the videos with the shitty setup before it was perfect and then could use those subscribers to then promote the videos to watch the videos that I was doing with the good setup? I would much rather have had the experience and, and, uh, and the resources built up from having attempted to do the idea poorly by, so that by the time I have the ability to do it right, I have the subscriber base, I have the knowledge, I have, the, uh, you know, I have all the kinks worked out. I got rid of the suck. And that's great. It's great, that it's great when I finally get rid of the suck that I have 10,000 subscribers watching, that I have knowledge on how to do this, that I kind of understand how to interact with my audience. It makes everything easy. Again, by the time this forum doesn't suck anymore, it'll be great. I'd rather have a forum that doesn't suck, that has 100 subscribers from when it did suck, than have a forum that doesn't suck but that has zero subscribers because nobody signed up because I was so afraid that of releasing it into the world before it was perfect. Fuck perfection. Fuck waiting for perfection. And you know what? So fuck me, because sometimes I don't take my own advice. Sometimes I don't take Zafrank's advice like I'm telling you to take it right now. For example, uh, programming. 
When I was five years old, I got this little VTech computer from Toys R Us. And back then, you could buy these little play computers, these VTech computers, and they actually came with basic on them. Didn't come with much in terms of a manual, but it's one guy in my family, one of the few people in my family that I actually got along with that, you know, that wasn't trying to get something out of me every time he fucking called me. He gave me this book, Introduction to Basic. And it was a really, really good book. It was like 900 pages, but it put everything in a really basic, understandable terms. Didn't use big words for no reason. Used very good, clear-cut examples. And then by the time it was six, I was pretty good at it. I liked basic. I liked, you know, I made this little math test that would give you different levels of insults based on how wrong your answer was. Hi. Hi. Do you want attention? It's okay. I'll give you some attention. You deserve it. You were a good little kitty. It was a good little kitty. You are. Good girl, Blackberry. Now, when I was six years old, my mother became ill, and my house became this constant fighting, arguing, screaming um, mess for the next 11 years that I lived there. So it wasn't really an environment within which I could, I, I could um, learn a programming language as a kid or get anywhere with it. And I've also started to get bored with the electronics repair stuff. Again, keep in mind, I've been doing this a long fucking time now. The studio stuff got incredibly boring when I couldn't make money on it anymore in the t crash of 2008, when all those studios that were teetering on the brink finally fell over. And this stuff, honestly, that I'm doing now is starting to get boring. I was talking to Steve the other day about some funny video that we were watching, and I was talking to him, and we were joking about the video, and we talked about some other video that had a douchebag similar to the douchebag in that video, and we laughed, and he brought up another one, and I didn't even notice the entire time we were doing this, the entire time we were doing that, that I had, was measuring a board that had quarter fan spin, I was measuring voltages on it without checking the schematic or the board view, I replaced two things, and it worked. I wasn't actively thinking. It was just a pre-programmed process in my head. And when I'm doing these videos, I have to troubleshoot it as if I am troubleshooting it for the first time. The reason that these videos are as slow as they are, instead of being the, you know, the very quick board repairs I often talk about, is because I like to, I, I want my users to get inside my head, but I want them to actually follow everything as if they're inside my head. And in order to do that, in the videos, I have to drag everything out and make it seem like I'm doing this for the first time. And when I'm doing stuff on my own, it really is that quick. And I realized I just fixed that while I was holding a conversation on a stupid YouTube video. And I was listening, and I was an active participant in the conversation. It wasn't idle. And I realized, like, this is just not challenging anymore. There's just no challenges anymore in that field. There are different things, like, you know, can you, can you get data, you know, can you uh, revive this $100 Android phone, or can you do this with this piece of equipment? And that stuff is not fun because it, it's a challenge, but it's a challenge that doesn't have any money at the end of it, so, so why bother? So for the stuff I'm doing right now, I'm kind of bored. So I thought I would get back into programming. So eight months ago, I said, I want to learn PHP. The reason I chose PHP is because I have a Magento store. I have a WordPress website. Uh, there, are, there are other pieces of software that I use that work in PHP. And I thought it would be cool if I could actually know how some of that stuff work. Like if there's an issue with free PBX or some little asterisk thing or some extension, it would be nice if I could read that and actually know what's going on. So as much as PHP is a shit language for many reasons, a lot of people argue that it's a shit language that are good programmers. I'm not gonna disagree with them on any of it. I sure as hell am not qualified to. I thought I would learn it because a lot of the tools that I use use PHP, so. And I said I was gonna learn it. You know what I said? I started getting involved with it, and I was like, wow, I, I'm sucking at all of this. I'll figure it out tomorrow. I, decide, I, I tried to make that coin flipping program work. I tried to write the program that randomly flips a coin. Three hours in, I couldn't figure out how to make it work. And I say, you know what? Eh, tomorrow. I don't have the time today. I don't have the resources today. You know what happened tomorrow, 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 tomorrow? It's fucking, it's almost May. It's, fuck, it, it's April 27th, 2016. It's been almost nine months now. You know what? Tomorrow never fucking came because I still can't get the goddamn coin flipping coin program to work. And a lot of people will say, Lewis, I, you know, you've helped me out. I, I will help you out with this coding stuff. I will answer your programming questions. But the problem with that is I didn't become good at what I'm doing because there was somebody there to answer my questions. I became good at it because I banged my head against the wall until it made sense doing research and figuring it out my own way. The reason I'm good at the troubleshooting, the reason I'm, I got good at the recording studio stuff, the reason I got good at figuring out what different sounds coming out of a Poltec mean in terms of what's actually 
wrong inside of it is because I kept using my brain, I was training my brain, I was using analytical thinking, and I was comparing the problem to what what wound up actually measuring wrong. And I just kind of created this little database in my head. And it's based on logic, it's based on reason, and I need to do that with this on my own. And I kept just saying tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. You know why I do that? Because I hate to suck. It sucks to suck. It sucks to not even know that a fuck, what a backlight fuses. It sucks to not know how a DC to DC boost circuit works. It sucks to not know what current sensing is. It sucks to not know how to solder. It sucks to not know how to do BGA rework. It sucks to not know uh, what's causing crosstalk in a Neve 8088 console when you have Joe Ciccarelli coming in tomorrow and paying $3,000 a day with my morning jacket. And they, they want to know why the fuck do we hear this guy's voice on the bass drum track. It sucks to suck. It sucks to not know how something works. It sucks to stare at the manual and realize that the manual is just this condescending piece of shit that says, do X so that Z will happen when you're like, but how do I do X? Explain it to me. And it doesn't make any sense. It sucks. It's not fun. And it's not, so we say we'll do it tomorrow because we're afraid to suck. But the way you get around this is by being excited every time you every time you make a tiny bit of progress. When I figure out how to do an if-else statement, I'm happy. When I figure out how to print hello world, I'm happy. When I figure out how to make a function work, I'm happy. When I figure out how to make an array work, I'm happy. When I figure out how to sort an array, now I'm happy. So every single step, these are all small things. These are all small things that somebody else is going to look at and say, Lewis, how the hell can you be excited to be accomplishing this because it's such a joke that you're even putting your cat to sleep. Isn't that right, Blackberry? I'm boring. But it's something that's exciting to me. The reason it's exciting to me is because yesterday I didn't understand it. And there are people that would have made fun of me when I didn't know how to do a backlight fuse. The reason I got better is because I was willing to put the time in and I wasn't afraid to suck. I wasn't afraid to actually say, I'm going to celebrate the fact that today I soldered a 0603 component. To other people, that's an everyday thing. At one point, that was a mountain that I had to climb over. And I was excited when I got to the top of the mountain. And you have to see every single one of these little things standing between you and being good at what you do as something to celebrate. You have to be okay with the fact that sometimes you're going to suck. And if once you accept that, once you accept that when you get rid of the suck, you'll get to the part that's good, you'll figure out that there's a lot that you can learn. And I hope to be able to make the time for myself to become good at something else. Because it's fun. It's fun to learn new things as much as it sucks, as bad as it feels right now to barely implement your idea, to realize that it sucks. It, it feels that much better in, with an inverse proportion when you actually solve it, when you do, and it's, you know, someday I'm going to make that fucking coin flip program work. And not only am I going to make it work, but I'm going to actually understand why I made it work rather than just randomly eventually get to the solution. And when I figure out how to make that fucking coin flipping program work, that's going to feel just as good to me as that one time I replaced one backlight fuse. Right now, I look back at the me that couldn't replace a backlight fuse and then me that didn't know what a DC to DC boost circuit was, I look back at that me like, was that even me? How long ago was that? Was that a lifetime ago? But it wasn't a lifetime ago. I've barely even aged in physical appearance. It was that short a time frame ago. And, 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 that, and that's something that, that encourages me because if I could go from being that much of an idiot to this good at what I do in this little field, then why can't I do it again? If I was able to do that with studio gear, if I was able to do that with the laptop stuff, why can't I do that again? The only thing keeping me from figuring it out, the only thing keeping me from accomplishing it is a stupid little fucking thought in my head that allows me to feel good about accomplishing nothing as long as I use that bullshit line that I'll do it tomorrow. It's a line that I'm going to stop using myself and it's a line that I want you to stop using as well. Start celebrating the small successes in your life. Start celebrating the small things that you're getting right on your way to reaching your goal. Don't be afraid to let an idea out half-baked because a half-baked idea is far more ready to eat than an idea that you never bothered putting in the oven. And that's a really bad analogy to end a video on. And with that, I'm going to end the video with a really bad analogy because it's too late in the day for me to come up with anything better. Do you have anything to say, Blackberry? Good girl.
Good girl. This is my cat. Oh, who likes being scratched? You like being scratched, don't you? She always headbutts my nose. I don't get the headbutting the nose thing because that part's actually painful. That's different than a nuzzle. Nuzzle? Ow! Headbutt. Ow, headbutt. <laughs> Furball. That's that for today.